Hey, this is Ashley, and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic, and I'm about to get a little bit real for a change, and I'm going to be talking a bit about K-pop and my own personal depression. So let's just kind of just jump right into it. Um, I will say that this will probably have some trigger warnings for some of you who may suffer from depression or have dealt with thoughts of suicide, things like that. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I will be mentioning it. So yeah, there is your warning, but I'm going to be talking about how K-pop helps me cope with it and also how K-pop actually has this role in also both feeling it and not feeling it. It, it. I'll get into it. So let's just go ahead and let's just do this. I spent 20 minutes on my makeup this morning. Actually, I spent a half an hour on my makeup this morning. So I don't have nearly as much time as I wanted to film this. So let's go. Okay. So I guess the, the best place for me to start is, I guess, how it, how depression personally affects me and you might probably already gonna be able to tell this but um so at least for me um memory is one of those things that is I'm I'm always terrible with my memory um I forget things very easily I remember things that are completely irrelevant but I forget important things and when I get into start to get into a more depressed state um my memory just kind of goes even further I forget way more um and it it can get kind of bad um obviously it's not to the point where I can't do anything but it does make me miss things that I'm not supposed to miss things that when I'm usually fully on my game I have it on because I'm just the kind of scheduled person I am um also and this this is the other thing um like I get really scatterbrained like um there are all these things that I had thought of that I knew that I wanted to go over usually I can just make a list in my head and just go over things real quick and I might miss some things but I don't really stumble too much right now I'm really out of it and I kind of lose a lot of just um interest like, I'm still interested in things, but I become um, hyper-focused. Um, that I guess that's the best way. Like, I select the few things that still make me happy, and in this case, it's right now X1. And I hyper-focus on those things because they do bring me those levels of happiness that I'm not getting elsewhere. Um, so, but also because I'm forgetful me doing things it actually is really difficult so it might look like I'm really extremely hyper focused but in reality I'm really still scatterbrained and forgetful but I'm instead of my usual usually I'm doing multiple things at one time getting everything done um, I just cut everything out and I only focus on just one thing at a time so it looks like I'm really focused but in reality I'm still I'm just forcing myself to do something um, so I'm not really as productive, even though it might seem like I'm more. Um, okay. Depression is something that I've dealt with for quite a while in my life. Um, so when I was in sixth grade, it was the first time I wanted to commit suicide. Um, it wasn't really like intense. It was something that I had mentioned and a friend had pretty much tried to kibosh it. It wasn't anything like intense and serious um it was one of those oh this is an option to get rid of how i feel um not a good option obviously um and it was something that was still very new to me and then my sophomore year of college was the first time i really 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 tried which was a very rough and difficult experience for me personally um, not just the feelings of wanting to commit suicide and getting to the point that I wanted to actually do something and I was in the process of trying to do something. Um, but it was actually what even hit even harder was the things that 
caused me to make me want to feel that way were stopped by random, not random people, but people that I knew were stopped by those people. And then as soon as they stopped, I was then immediately abandoned and thrown back into the same situation that I was before. So it was a really rough situation of, I guess I really can't do this, but it's, it was rough. Shortly after college, I didn't quite get to the point where I wanted to commit suicide, but I was very, very close. And it's, even now, um, there are times, especially recently, where it's hard sometimes walking through the street and there's these thoughts of, what if I just stepped out in front of this car right now? Just wash. And I know that those aren't thoughts that I should have, but um, they're thoughts that happen. But let's get into the meat and potatoes. How K-pop helps me with this and also how right now <laughs> I'm also kind of in a bit of a mess of my own. Um, so for me, and I'm going to say for me a lot um, because this is only my personal experience and I've seen how other people react and how other people feel differently and everybody, every person feels and experiences things differently. The role that K-pop plays for me is kind of like a filler and this is something that has happened to me throughout the years. Um, I find something that I love, that I adore, that I can attach myself to, something that is generally positive, something that can engage me. And I grasp onto it. And K-pop has actually been able to fill this hole much better than many of the other things that I've grasped onto. I've grasped onto books, I've grasped onto video games, I've grasped onto other sorts of um, communities, I've done band, anything that can, that can engage me. Um, but where K-pop really seemed to excel was that unlike the most recent previous hook that I had, which was books, um, K-pop actually came with something a little bit different, and that's a community. And I'm not saying that books didn't have a community. I was part of BookTube for a short period of time. Um, but with the BookTube community, um, I ended up feeling just as unwelcomed within the booktube community that I was reaching out to be a part of to feel welcomed as I did in regular life, which is my main problem. I often feel alone. I need community. I'm extremely shy, so I need to be surrounded and around by people that are going to comment and talk to me and engage me regardless of the fact that I'm shy. And yeah, um, that didn't happen with the book community but it did happen with the K-pop community. And all of a sudden something that I like and I have this interest in is suddenly like giving me this community. And I started my YouTube channel, this channel, yay. Um, and all of a sudden there were a whole bunch of people that were talking to me and engaging me regularly and daily. And it that sort of community was what I needed. I was able to come here and talk to people. I was able to go onto my Twitter all of a sudden and just talk to people. There were friends and people that were surrounding me to engage me in this community and talk about something that is making me excited that I can watch and laugh and have fun and feel touched and moved. And there were just so many things wrapped up with this K-pop that I was just in, I was in a good place. There were, I, I could talk to people and that's really my key thing. I often feel isolated, I feel alone, I feel forgotten, I feel unloved. That's how I feel right now. Um, I feel forgotten and alone and um, unwanted and not good enough and inadequate. Those are the feelings that are often stirring up in me that, that make me spiral, that make me have these depressive episodes. Um, and yeah, K-pop is this kind of release that even if I don't feel good enough, that maybe at, le at least I can still be a fan, at least I can still support a group and do well doing something, you know? I don't know, it's, it's one of those things. I make this content where um, I try to be engaging, try to put my personality out there. I couldn't, <laughs> so 
you get a little bit of story time from my channel. The reason I don't do reactions isn't because I don't like reactions. It's because I got copyright strikes, which meant that I would potentially lose this outlet completely to talk to people, and then I'm completely on my own, um, which I didn't want. So I had to reel back on that. And then I got the opportunity to kind of do them a little bit more again. But again, there's the copyright. And then also there was a shift in the tone and how people reacted to reaction videos. There were a lot of people that look down upon reaction videos, that see them as annoying, that have these comments. And it was one of those things where I started to get even more self-conscious because if the people that I want to try to engage with, or there's, or I feel like there's a whole bunch of people that are looking down upon me because I'm doing these reaction videos no matter how genuine I am. It's There's the inadequacy again, like I'm just not good enough. So um, I pulled back because one, I can avoid the copyright strikes and two, I didn't think I was good enough anyway. So I stopped. And every so often I want to do them again because I legitimately had a lot of fun doing them. Um, and then now, since I do them so infrequently, now I really don't get any reviews and comments and things like that to really engage again too much. There's some loyal people out there that I do get to engage with and I really enjoy that. But the rush of community that I used to have before, it's gone. Um, and I, the thing is, my channel is still growing. It's still growing daily but it's because of the um, compilation videos and the other sorts of videos that I do that are not the things that are mean, that are not the reactions, that are not the unboxings. Um, they're the videos of other people, the people that we do love. Um, and I'm glad for it because it means my channel can grow and then I can still see comments and engage a little bit, but it's also a little bit sad. <laughs> I love K-pop. It has been my crutch. Honestly, I've been feeling down for days now, but what I can do is I can open up. So this is gonna sound really silly, but um, I open up an X1 video. I don't watch an X1 video for a few hours and I start to feel like real empty because for some reason I can watch an X1 video and just watching them laugh, watching them goof around, it automatically makes me feel just a little bit better than I had been already. Um, I laugh and I smile. Um, I literally laid down last night for at least a half an hour just staring at a wall, not thinking about anything, not wanting to do anything. And I was finally just like, well, I haven't actually finished watching the English subbed version of the um, Singu and Sung um, live and so I watched that and within minutes I was laughing and I don't know what's wrong with me right now but I'm in this kind of state and I just I want a community I feel lost I feel empty I feel abandoned um, friends that I had they've gone and I know that that happens that doesn't bother me that they've gone but it's kind of like I've struggled to find new friends and I've always had a difficulty making friends um, I just want people to talk to and I hope that K-pop can still be a community that I can still find those people to talk to. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, K-pop makes me happy, X1 makes me happy. I hope that I can find a place within this community again. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Ah.